What's going on guys? Welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to another video, another transfer video for you guys because we are nearing that point of the year again where Chelsea delve into the transfer window and we look for little reinforcements to help us through the season even though we need more than just a little bit of reinforcements after the season that we've been having. But we're going to delve into all of the latest transfer rumours in today's video. We're going to discuss David Datra Fafana the name that has just popped out of nowhere in the last 24 hours. We're going to discuss everything there is to know about him. We're going to be keeping the topic to strikers as well and wingers. We're going to be discussing um, Vlahovic and potential links with him to Chelsea as well. Uh, we're going to be talking about Rafael Liao as the links to him and Chelsea strengthen too. Also going to be um, talking about the likes of Benjamin Sesko and Jao Felix. There's going to be plenty to delve in in today's video. And yeah, guys, if you want to know more about Chelsea, if you want to know more transfer rumours, you guys know the one place you need to be, and that is right here. So guys, if you haven't done so already, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification button as well if you want to be the first to know whenever we upload any new content, because we're going to be your one-stop shop for everything Chelsea over the next year. Transfer updates, games, off-the-pitch updates, on-the-pitch updates, if you need anywhere where you want to find your Chelsea news, it is right here, people. So, guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Check out my personal channel down in the description below. Let's say one like is one prayer because I absolutely need it right now. Whatever flu that has been going around over the last week or so has caught me, and I have never felt worse in my life, bruv. Never felt worse in my life. This feels like COVID-40 or something else, but... Well, we're here. We're here. and We're still delivering content. So just for the sake of my health, please hit the like button, people. Hit the like button. But we're going to delve straight into the news. <coughs> Sorry, just bear with me a little second, people. And yeah, we're going to delve straight into the Datro Fafana news because this has been the biggest news that has come out over the last day. Because nobody saw this player coming out of nowhere. Didn't see any hints, any rumours. We just got a nearly here we go from Fabrizio Romano. And he said, Chelsea are on the verge of signing David Datro Fafana. Here we go soon. There's a full agreement in place with Mould to sign the Ivoran striker born in 2002. Now he has 15 goals and 3 assists in um, 1,680 minutes for Mould this season. And for reference, Haaland had 12 goals and 4 assists in 1,600 minutes for Mould in his last season there. That's not to make any sort of Haaland and Fafana comparisons. I think that's a very big stretch to make right now. And I also don't want to do this thing that we always do, where we call this player a uh, Hazard regen or a Drogba regen or an Eto regen. Be the first Datro Fafana. That, that's all that I want. And this is something that I'm fine with. And I think a lot of Chelsea fans are and should be fine with as well because this is another transfer that's for the future. The only complaints that I've heard with this transfer are from people with the mindset that Fafana's going to come in and instantly fix all of our problems. And he's just not going to do that. He's not a player that's capable of doing that. And I don't think any one player does that anyway. But even if one player can, not somebody of this profile. Fafana's coming in as a long-term project for Chelsea. I kind of see the vision. I'll be real. I've only watched a couple clips of Fafana. I think 99% of people who are talking about would have only watched a few clips as well because nobody's really watching the, the Norwegian league respectfully. And I mean that in a very respectful way. But where, where are you finding the channels to watch that from? No one is. But from what I've seen... I mean, there's traits that could um, be honed into the Premier League if his development goes the right way, of course. Um, he's got a good finish. He's tall. He's strong. He's got the pace and power in his game already. That just needs to continue to grow and develop. He looks good in tight spaces from some of the finishes that I'm seeing. And that could be good in terms of dealing with the likes of low blocks. Um, he can go wide and deliver crosses if necessary. He can also poach, but... That's not really going to mean too much for us with our creators. But again, this is not something for right now. This is something for in the future. But as a player, as a transfer, I think this is a very low risk, high reward sort of move. Because if he balls out, 
we have just signed an absolute gem for under £10 million. If he doesn't, it doesn't really get in the way of Brogia's development. We haven't lost a lot of money. We could probably still recoup our money, maybe even make a profit based off loan deals if it doesn't work out. If it does, we have two potentially great strikers in Brogia and in Fafana. So in all aspects, I could see this transfer working for us. I don't see any issues except people complaining about the name of the striker. Oh, it's come out of nowhere. Or we're copying Brighton because Brighton were the only other club interested in him. Low-key, Brighton have had better scouting systems than we have over the last five years. Just look at the players they brought in and look at the players that we've brought in. Like, everyone doesn't want us to be like Brighton, but there are aspects of Brighton that we could take in and we could use to improve ourselves. So, I'm fine with this. I, I am genuinely fine with Fafana coming to Chelsea. I think it's a good long-term addition for us. And yeah, let me know you guys' thoughts in the comment section below. Moving on to Dusan Vlahovic. And Ben Jacobs has said that he's been told there's a real possibility that Vlahovic will leave Juve in 2023. A January exit is not being ruled out by those close to him. And several top European clubs are in touch with his agent, with Chelsea being one of the clubs included. Nothing's particularly advanced at this point, but Chelsea have had interest for a while. And Vlahovic is a quality striker. I've wanted him since the Fiorentina days, um, personally. And I think his build and everything is something that could still assimilate well into the Premier League. My only problem with Vlahovic is the same problem that most strikers have had. Lack of service. And that's only going to continue to be a problem for him. I think with Vlahovic, if we could build a better team and have him be the final piece in that puzzle, I could see it. And it could really work well for us. But when we have a creativity problem as bad as Chelsea do, he's just going to struggle to do anything in game. Like, look at Aubameyang. Look at Aubameyang, for example. And Aubameyang is someone who I think has been given a very, very unfair rep at Chelsea. Because, like, I get it. People want to see um, a bit more from him. But I only wanted to see goals, personally. He's only a goal scorer. He's in his uh, mid-30s and is a short-term option for us anyway. All I'm asking for Aubameyang is to finish chances. And we don't feed him enough for him to even do his job. So I can't blame Aubameyang too much. And it would be the same energy if Vlavic joins. Vlavic isn't really known for being the best in build-up play from what I've read. He's more just a poacher and better being at the, better being at the end of all things. He can hold up play a little bit, but... That's about it. His link-up play isn't anything spectacular either. I think as a long-term signing, it benefits us. If we signed him, I wouldn't say anything negative about it. I just wouldn't expect him to do anything for us right now. But that's my only real thoughts about it. I think he's a good long-term option for us. But I don't really um, understand going for a striker right now when it's not going to change anything for us. We should be looking a bit further back. We should be trying to get midfielders in. Should be trying to look for wing back depth and potentially getting a goalkeeper in. That 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 would be where I would personally look. But yeah, Vlavic, I would still bring in. I'd still bring in. Moving on to Rafael Liao and Chelsea are prepared to offer the Rossoneri a sum of one hundred million euros, and they're also ready to offer the player a monstrous contract in order to pick Chelsea over the string of other clubs interested in him. Now, Rafael Liao has one year left on his deal at the end of the season. So I would like to see if Chelsea could potentially lower that a little bit because I like Liao, but I'm in a bit of two minds about him. Uh, because, again, my thing is right now, we need creators. And Liao isn't necessarily the best passer. There's also been questions about his work rate and how he could adapt to the Premier League because... He plays in a transitional side in AC Milan. He deals with a lot more space than he will do in the Premier League. But if we were bringing him in as a number nine, I could understand it a bit more. Because he's got the build. He's got the PMP in his game already. He's a great finisher. He's a great dribbler. And you don't necessarily need the creative outlook or the work rate from him in that aspect. If you're playing him around the wings, I feel like you need that a little bit more. But I feel like... If we could lower it, I'd be 100% sold on it. Right now, if Chelsea were to buy him, 
I still wouldn't say anything too much against it, but I'd have my reservations about his immediate impact into the side. But regardless, I still think if we could put a Pulisic in, in the deal, if we could potentially put Ziyech in the deal as well, because I know AC Milan have had long-term interest in the pair of them. If we could put them in the deal, I could understand it a lot more. And that would sweeten it a lot more for us because then you could lower the transfer by around 40 to 50 million and suddenly it looks a lot more affordable but yeah Liao I think would be a much better option for us as a number nine than he would be as a winger and I have heard rumors that Chelsea are looking to play him in that role instead so that looks a lot more promising personally um, moving on to Benjamin Sesco I'm just going to run through this one quickly um, there's been rumours with him, with him going to Chelsea, but he has literally signed the pre-contract agreement with Leipzig. So it's just not happening. So we could just forget about that one now. And Jao Felix. Chelsea are tracking Jao Felix as they battle Arsenal for the Atletico Madrid start. I, I don't mind him coming in. I've said I, I, I see this guy as like Havertz with better finishing technique and better creativity, but... He's still going to struggle with the physicality of this league. And there's still been questions over his attitude. But he has been rumoured to either go on a permanent or on a loan deal. Now, if we could get him on a loan deal, I'm 100% down for that. Because to me, that's like testing a car out before you before you buy it. We can bring him into the Premier League, see how he's moving. If it works, fine. Perfect. If it doesn't, then we just send him straight back to Atletico. But I think as a player, I, I see the vision. I see the quality. I've just got questions about the consistency. And that's why they say he's like Havertz. So I, I don't know. I don't know. But guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Chelsea Fan TV. I've been Carefree Lewis and I am out. Up the Chelsea.